One brethren, we'll get started this morning. <clears throat> Trust that everyone is doing well. It was a weekend. Enjoy the sun. A little bit of rain on Saturday, but I hope that you were able to enjoy the weekend. Amen. Let us pray. King of kings, Lord of lords, our Father and God, our Lord Jesus. Father, I'm so grateful. Another day you've come forth, another day by your grace and mercy. We give you thanks for what you have done for us throughout the night to this morning, Lord. How you've strengthened us, how you've kept us and sheltered us. Oh, Father, providing for our every need, blessed be that holy name. We are grateful for your hand over us, O God. So we see the tumult in the world, Father. We see the situations <clears throat> around us, Lord. Oh, Father, we're so grateful that you are our God. But you alone, O oh Father, rule it in the affairs of our lives. Father, we say thank you. We magnify your holy name this morning. We give you thanks for your goodness unto us, Lord. Your truth that filleth not. Your faithfulness, Father, by day and by night, continually doing things even beyond our comprehension. Blessed be thy holy name. Thank you, Father. We commit now our soul, body, and spirit into your mighty hand. That you alone may have the preeminence in us and through us throughout this day. And forevermore, that the word that you will express unto us will quicken us, will change us, will transform us, will cause us to be in tune, that we will hear from you completely in the name of Jesus Christ, that we will receive that which is needed to move us forward in our relationship with you, in our fellowship with you, that you will give a transformation, O oh Father, in our life today, that we will clearly hear from you the way you intend for us to go, Father. The things that you have freely given unto us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That will be empowered. That will be strengthened. That will be fortified. That will be quickened in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That your power alone will rule in the affairs of our lives throughout this day in Jesus' name. Father, we commend our soul, body, and spirit into your hand. Any that is sick. One need or the other over any brother, any sister today, Father. We pronounce your promised word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the healing virtue of the living God be poured out upon our brothers and sisters now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every sickness, let every disease, let every issues be taken away permanently in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your promised word that you have given unto us, that you said, O oh, Father God, beloved, we desire above all things that we prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper. Prosper. Father, today establish your strength of your word in us. Manifest it to us, Father. Let the angels of the Lord, Father, pour out that which you are freely given into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let it become now a reality in every fabric of our being in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We commend now all things into your hands. We thank you for every substance. We thank you for every breakthrough. We thank you for every open door, that point of need, that thing that is critical to us at this stage of life. Father, we thank you for the manifestation of it even today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise, adoration, and exaltation. As we look unto you now, may you strengthen us the more. May we see you completely, O oh Father, in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Take a few songs of worship unto our God this morning as we prepare to receive his word. Yes. Oh, glory to the Lord who seated on the throne and to the land forevermore oh glory to the lord who seated on the throne and to the land forevermore oh glory Oh, glory to the Lord who seated on the throne and to the Lamb forevermore. 
here today. Oh, glory to the Lord who seated on the throne and to the Lamb forevermore. Oh, glory to the Lord Jesus who seated on the throne and to the Lamb forevermore. Let's confess it again. Oh, glory to the Lord who seated on the throne and to the land forevermore. Amen. Only our God deserve all the glory. All the glory unto him alone. Blessed be his holy name. He is able, abundantly able, to deliver and to save. He is able. Abundantly able to deliver those who trust in Him. Hallelujah. Oh, He is able. Abundantly able. To deliver and to save, he is able, abundantly able. To deliver those who trust in Him. We know, we know He is able, abundantly able to deliver and to save he is able abundantly able to deliver those who trust in our God alone. He is able, abundantly able to deliver. And to save, he is able, abundantly able, to deliver those who trust in. Confess it again to him this morning. He is able, my God is abundantly able to deliver and to save. He is able, abundantly able. To deliver those who trust in Him. Ancient of days, as old as you are, 
as strong as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as strong as you are. You will never change. Today we say, ancient of days, as old as you are, as strong as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as strong as you are, you will never change. So the ancient of days, as old as you are, as strong as you are, my God, you will never change. Ancient of days. As old as you are, as strong as you are, you will never change. Hallelujah. You can always depend on him because he's faithful. His word cannot be changed, can never return to him void. All that he has spoken, blessed be his holy name. The lion of Judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again. The lion of Judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again oh the lion of judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again the lion of judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again confess it the lion of judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again the lion of judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again the lion the lion of judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again the lion of judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again the lion of judah has broken every today and has given us the victory again and again the lion of judah has broken every yoke and has given us the victory again and again Hallelujah. That's our God continually in our lives. From victory unto victory. Hallelujah. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I 
I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flow. Hallelujah! Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flow. Confess it again. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all oh, my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flow. Confess it again. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me. To victory beneath the cleansing flow. Hallelujah. Let us pray. King of kings and Lord of lords, our Father, our God, when we reflect on what you have done in our lives to bring us to this hour, to this moment, to this time, to this next breath, Father, we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. The victory that you've wrought in our lives through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, how you went out, for we were not looking for you. But you went out and sought after us, Father. Oh, among the billions, oh, Father God, you plucked us out from among the billions to bring us on to victory, to wash us by the blood, to cleanse us and to sanctify us, to divide us from evil, to separate our lives from bondage. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. There is not enough thanksgiving, O oh Father, to express what you have done for us, O oh Father God. The life, O oh Father, and the path, O oh Father Lord Jesus. The way we will be now if you did not sought after us. The, O oh Father, the life we will have now if you did not sought after. The condition we may have found ourselves in if you did not sought after us, O oh Father God. And reconcile us unto yourself and delivered us from bondage and captivity, O oh Father. King of glory, the torment that we may have faced. Oh, Father, the situation, perhaps calamity and death may have already found us. Oh, Father, if you did not sought after us and brought us into this way and has given unto us this life, blessed be thy holy name. We glorify you today. We exalt you today. We are grateful for the mercy through the blood of Jesus. We are grateful for the mercy through the blood of Jesus. We are grateful for the mercy through the blood of Jesus. We are grateful for the mercy through the blood of Jesus that has brought us to this hour, Father. That has caused us to remain. Oh, blessed be thy holy name. That has caused us to be sustained, oh, Father. Thank you for your goodness unto us. Thank you for your strength unto us, oh, Father. Nothing in ourselves that has kept us. For without you, we can do absolutely nothing father for without you are exposed oh father to the enemy constant attack without oh father limitation 
could be our portion. But oh Father, you have separated us, oh Father, through the blood of Jesus, oh Father, causing us to overcome him, oh Father, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you adoration and exaltation today, O oh Father, for the blessing of your mercy upon our lives. Father, we pray the day that you'll bring us into that state of recognition. O oh Father, of awakening. Oh, let our lives be so quickened, my soul and the souls of my brothers and sisters today in one accord, Father, that we will look upon you in a greater measure, Father, that we will reflect a ride, that contriteness and conviction and transformation may enter into our heart, O oh Father, that we may walk before you worthy on to all pleasing that we will think about you in every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ that our soul will yearn and hunger and thirst oh Father, to draw nearer and nearer unto you daily in the name of Jesus Christ help me today help my brothers and sisters father take full control preeminence and residence upon us now in us and through us all day and forevermore in Jesus mighty name father we thank you for this opportunity to be here now in this divine appointment we thank you for all the blessings of this day that you provided for us oh god all the works of our hand all the offering that we'll send before you today oh father we pray that you will bless us and strengthen us that we'll receive and retain and express it father for your glory have your way in us now and forevermore lord we give you all the glory all the honor all the praise father we appreciate you in our lives oh father help us now to show it continually oh father oh father god daily as we live oh father god an expression of what you have done an appreciation of your love unto us so oh, father sought in after us oh lord brought bringing us unto thyself blessed be thy holy name in jesus mighty name we say thanks hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus blessed be thy holy name blessed be thy holy name hallelujah let us continue to worship our god Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of the... I ask of you, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. More of you, Lord. Lord, give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, give me burning. Keep me burning till the break of, oh, give me oil, give me oil in my lamp. Give me burning, burning, burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of the hallelujah. Oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Oh, give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning. Burning till the break of this sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Oh, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the Oh, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing 
Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the soon, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the soon and very soon and very soon we are going to see the oh yeah soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah Going to see the soon and very soon and very soon. We are going to see the oh yes, soon and very soon. We are going to see the Jesus soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the King. Oh, oh, oh soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Jesus soon and and very soon we are going to see the king oh soon and very soon we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we are going to see the king. confess it soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king jesus soon and very soon we are going to see the king Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. Hallelujah to our home on God's celestial shore, I'll fly away, I'll fly away. Away, oh glory, I'll fly away, amen, amen. I can die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, oh, I will fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, I know I can and I, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, oh, I will fly away, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away, I know I can die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, swing Swing low, sweet chariot, who oh, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Amen. For to carry me, oh, oh, swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, who oh, coming for to carry me, oh, swing low, sweet chariot, who oh, coming for to carry me, oh, today we say swing low, sweet chariot. Oh, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, 
sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, oh, coming for to carry me home. Oh, Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, oh, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Hallelujah. Oh, that's our prayer today. Our focus, our complete control of our minds and lives. Be set on Jesus, looking unto him, the author and finisher of our faith. Our home, true earth to glory. From earth to glory, that is our home, that is our focus. As we walk in this flesh, looking unto him at all times. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As we prepare to receive more from him now. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for Thou hast created all things are for Thy pleasure. They are and were created, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things are for my pleasure thy pleasure and were created oh thou art worthy thou art worthy O Lord today to receive glory honor and power for thou hast created all things are for thy pleasure they are and were created thou art worthy thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things are for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things are for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power, for Thou hast created all things are for Thy pleasure. They are 
Great God, thou art faithful. Thou art faithful to your word. You are faithful, you are gracious, you are merciful. Lord, kindness is your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy and your compassion. They are new every morning. That is why we are not consumed. There are many things to consume us. There are powers of darkness that wish we never live a second. They are all out there wishing we don't see the next second. But Lord, your faithfulness, Lord, your faithfulness, your mercy has kept us. That is why your angels are there. If there were no dangers, your angels would not be there. And the Bible says the angel of the Lord had come, make a wall around them that fear the Lord. If there were no dangers, your angels would not be encamping around those that fear you. I thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your kindness, for your blessings, for your protection, for your comfort for your compassion upon us. We thank you today. Bless your name for every soul that is connected in this morning. Thank you, O oh God, for every brother, every sister, sitting down, listening in this morning, wherever they are. O oh Lord, I give you praise for their lives. It shows the devil is defeated. It shows the enemy has been conquered. His powers have been broken. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I glorify your name. Now I commit the service now into your hands. I ask, oh God, come and take preeminence. Lord, come and speak to your children. Come, Lord, and talk to us, Father. Give us listening heart this morning. 
How that can understand your word. That can hear your voice, O oh God. Help us to recognize your voice. May we listen to your voice and no other voice. Lord Jesus, help us this morning. Give us heart that can hear your voice. May we not hear the voice of the devil. Because the devil would like to speak as well. But I pray, Lord, that you give us a heart that can hear your voice this morning. And a word from you means everything to us in life. If we can hear one word from you this morning, oh, it will give us the victory that we need for the week. So we pray this morning, help us. Give us a heart that can hear your voice. Almighty God, I pray. Every powers of darkness that want to war against the service today, all the demons from the pit of hell, wherever they are from, from any mountains and oceans, I command them to live right now in the name of Jesus. Every house where they are listening in and the devil wants to go to bother them, I command those spirits to live now and be thrown into the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let peace be in every home this morning where they are gathered to listen to the word of God. Let the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with them in Jesus' name. Let all the works of the devil be destroyed. All the witchcraft activities be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we commit our tithes and our offerings into your hands, O oh Lord, that we have brought into your house for the maintenance of your house, Lord. I pray that you bless them. May they be used for that purpose, dear Lord. I ask, Lord, that your grace be upon your children as a endeavor, Lord, to do those things that are necessary, that you will bless them, O oh God. Father, bless them when they go out. Bless them when they come in, Father. Let that promise be fulfilled in their life. As they have obeyed your voice, O God, may you indeed bless them. Let the hand of the devourer be rebuked for their sake, Lord Jesus. Open the window of heaven and pour them blessings, O God, in abundance, Lord Jesus, that they can look to it and say, Yes, my God has honored his word. And you always honor your word. Because you are faithful. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and worship you. I commit myself into your hands this morning. For I do not know what to say. But I commit my lips, my mouth. Oh, Lord, my eye, every part of me, I place in your hand. Let your Holy Spirit take over this morning. Let your Holy Spirit speak, oh God. In a way that we can be quickened. We can be strengthened, oh Lord. We can walk a little further. We can clap a little higher to meet you, Lord Jesus. Help us now, Father. Grant it, for we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This Friday coming, we will be having a fasting prayer meeting here this Friday. Please, uh, Prepare for that. This Friday, we have church fasting and prayer coming up. Okay, so plan it, put it into your plan, and uh, God bless you. <coughs> Let's just take a, a scripture from the book of John, St. John chapter 8, verse 32. Read one line there. Said John chapter 8, verse 32. Said John chapter 8, verse 32. It says here, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus add his blessings to his word, in Jesus' name. Amen.
You may be seated. God bless you. God bless you richly. So when we come to church, we come to learn of the Lord. We come to learn of the truth. And, and as Jesus said here, said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Only the truth can set you free. Everything else will bring you to bondage, but the truth will set you free. I will try to conclude the series we've been looking at uh, over the past two services, um, <coughs> Deception of Satan, Witchcraft, and all those things. Uh, but last Sunday, something as we were praying to close, I had a strong feeling in my heart to address a small section uh, that I had left out previously. Uh, this morning, I will just look at that quickly and we will move on. We move on. <clears throat> now, if you notice, all that the devil is after is to take control of you. That is all he wants, he wants, is to take control of you. All his deception, all his activities, all his program, the end game is to take control of you. Nothing more than that. He just wants to rule over you. He just wants to control you. But let's look at the, the law of God, the instruction of God are meant to protect you from that. That is all that the word of God is. It's meant to protect you from what the devil is trying to achieve. God is blocking him so he doesn't achieve what he wants to achieve. And if you can open your heart to him this morning and let him speak to your heart. As he has said there in St. John chapter 8, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. But if you believe a lie, the lie will only bring you to bondage. It will not set you free. So now, if we look here in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18. Deuteronomy, chapter 18. Let's uh, look at that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18. <coughs> The instruction of God to his people, the called out people, which was the church in wilderness, concerning the things that we have been looking at. What did God tell his children? What did he tell them? Deuteronomy chapter 18, <coughs> verses 9 through 14. So verse 9. He said, When thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. You should not follow the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you Anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, soothsayers, astrologers, or an enchanter, interpreters of omen or a witch, or a shaman, a spell caster. Those are cast spells. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. A wizard, or necromancer. Those are speak to the dead. They go to the graveyard to pray, to call up the dead. Said you should say none of these things should be found among you. This is what the, those nations were doing. Those nations they were doing those things, and God told His children, "As you are going to possess that land, don't learn their ways. 
This is why I destroyed him. Verse 12. For all that do those things are abomination unto the Lord. And because of those abominations, the Lord thy God doeth drive them out from before thee. Say, so because of these abominations, God drove them out. And if we do those things, same thing today, God will drive us out of our inheritance. Simple. He will drive us out. We will not be able to get it. But sadly, paganism is reviving. Paganism is on the uprise. In the year 2013, the Christian Post in the U.S., they published an article and they said, among those that have declared to be witches in the U.S., there were 200,000. 200,000 people, young people, declared to be witches in the U.S., 2013. Several years ago. And those that do not declare, but they are practitioners, were about 7 million in the US alone. So they said, they concluded that it makes sorcery the fastest growing religion behind Islam. Islam is first, fastest growing. And then followed by that is sorcery. Sorcery. You know they teach it in this school? They teach it. Otherwise, you they have a cause to call witchcraft, occult, and, and something else. Magic. They teach it in school. They teach it everywhere. There are programs for those things. To tell you what the devil is out to doing. And among the young people, especially, when you hear a young child, a young girl, a young boy say, I'm a pagan, you know, it's a witch. That's another word they used to refer to witch, pagan. So if you go to the child, no, I'm a pagan. <laughs> Do you know Jesus Christ? No, I'm a pagan. It's a witch. That's what they get themselves into. But that's the word of God. The word of God to us here says nobody should do those things. Nobody should be a witch, a wizard. Nobody should be an enchanter, a spell caster. Why do they do that? Because they are void of true spiritual leadership. They are void of true spiritual direction. And so they come up with their own spiritual path. They come up with that. Some do it because they want self-transformation. I am trusting that this morning there is somebody there that needs help from what I'm trying to say. Somebody there that needs help. Somebody there that needs to come out of that bondage. Don't think it's fun. So yeah, all my friends are doing it. Oh, well, it's fun. It's not fun. You are digging a big hole for yourself. Don't go that route. It's a big hole you are digging for yourself. <laughs> Some do it because they like to cast spell of love. They want a certain boy to be around them always. So they, they cast spell of love upon that person. And the person can't sleep without them. Sometimes the phone is ringing. Ah, it is over here. Ah, it is over here. They just follow you up and down. And you think that you really love that person. Ah, the person is so kind. He said, you are working under a spell. Don't realize it. A lot of the times, that is what it is. You are walking under a spell. 
Yeah, it is going. It was going on. That's why God put it in His Word. A charmer, a spell caster. You cast a spell. Praise God. You cast a spell of people. People cast spells to take other people's money. A very simple one that happened to one young man some time ago. He went out. It was his brother. It was a brother, and he went out and uh, he met these people. But see, usually before that thing will work on you, you have a mind, a tendency to acquire something. If it is money spare, you have a, a mind. You, you are looking for a way to. To get my money, to get rich, to get my money. And so this young man, he's been working hard, he's been saving his money. Be, when he gets some lump sum of money, he takes it to his pastor. Say, Pastor, keep this money for me. If I keep it, I will eat it. Money for me. So the pastor took the money and kept them somewhere. He keep he kept keeping them. So one day. He came out among the chamas, and they cast a spell on him. And they said, we will double your money for you. You want to be rich? If you want 200,000, just give us 20,000. We make it 200 for you. And the spell caught him. Say, so really? So he went down to the pastor's house. He wanted to get all the money that he has saved. The pastor was at home. <laughs> so he met the wife, and the wife said, uh, Pastor is not home. Say, You know, that money, uh, there is a business I want to do. There's one business, it's going to yield a lot of money. Please just give it to me. Uh, the money will just be so plenty. I will bring it back and keep more in the place. He pressurized and pressurized and pressurized. So the woman brought the money and gave to him. This is money. So he went and gave the money to these people. And they told him, by tomorrow morning, your money will be everywhere. You will have plenty of money. So he went home. He was boasting. Don't worry, by tomorrow, you will see money everywhere. So when he came, he came, the pastor came back. He went, went to his house. Before, before he came, before the pastor came back, the wife said, look at what happened. She said, so what did you do? So I gave him, I gave him his money, now he was, you did? He fell down, that day he couldn't eat. <laughs> he was so sad, very sad. He said, this, this, this boy has been duped his money. His money has been taken from him. So not long, he walked in, Say, Pastor, don't worry. Tomorrow there'll be plenty of money. Say, what are you talking about? They took your money from you. All the labor you labor, you just wasted all that money. He said, I'm telling you now, tomorrow there will be plenty of money. <laughs> you know, when the devil enters you, he makes you like you are drunk. He makes you, you know, you become. You, be, you now have your, a doctrine of your opinion become your idol. You think you, have, you, are, you just nail it. You, you, you are holding to it now. There's nothing better than this. He went to the next morning, he came back crying. He said, oh, his senses came back to him. So said, oh, I lost my money. I lost my money. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Now he realized. But it's too late. They take the money, they're gone. You see that? Say spare. Say spare. He blinds you. Your senses become twisted. You can't see correctly. It blinds you. But that is just something that has to do with money. The same thing. Too. They cast a spell of love on you. He blinds you. You are going to darkness. You think, oh, I love this person. I love that person. And there is nothing there. It's not a Christian. It's nothing, 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 nothing. 
But it will just be blindly going on and blindly going on and blindly going on. There are charmers out there. God says they are there. They are there. And today they are even more. Today when the word of God has no place in the family. The word of God has no place in the society. They are even more there. Because the human beings still look for love. The human beings still seeking for that. And if he cannot get it the right way by God's word, he will use charm. That's right. He will use charm. He will use everything he wants to use to do it. Recently, we, we, we were all here, it was all in the newspaper, where that politician was sending his nude picture, right, over the internet to an unknown person. Why would you do that? Nude picture. At that level, you do that. Spare. Spare. Only under the blood of Jesus can you be protected. You can't argue that, my friend. It is only when you are under the blood you can be protected. When the spell hits you, the word of God means nothing to you. You will be looking at it as just a book. You will be looking at it as just something that has no meaning. You will be looking at it as what is that to me? What is that to me? What is that to me? It's a spare. It's a spare. And it's going on. In a society like this where everything seems calm. You know, we don't hustle for anything. You want water, it's there. Electricity is there. You want this, it's there. You want that, it's there. So we get deceived. We think that there are no witches there. There are no evil workers there. There are plenty. They may wear tar. They may wear their long skirts and pack their hair well. But it's still wrong in the sight of God. Don't fall for that now. Because where you will end up will be too bad. Don't fall for that. Don't, there are so many avenues by which they introduce the children when they talk into those things. They introduce them, but they don't realize. They introduce them. See? They introduce, like I was telling my children a long time ago, those days, when, when, when they are uh, kindergarten and all that, uh, 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 they, they, they try to introduce them into, into gambling. And I said, no, you can't do that. They say, oh, cake work, cake work, bring 25 cents. So you bring 25 cents and you throw 25, you get a ticket, you throw 25 cents, every the children, they put 25 cents ticket into the box like that, and then they're going to make a draw. Whoever wins, whoever ticket that wins the cake, he owes the cake. That's gambling in the elementary stage. And if you continue like that, you win a cake today. Oh, yeah, I have a good luck. You know, I have a good luck. And you keep winning cakes like that all through your school days. Then you say, oh, you know, I'm very, very, I have a good luck. I have a good luck. Then you will hear of lottery. What do they call it? Four sixty nine. For, for whatever they call uh, 649. Yeah, 649. Then you hear of that in the radio. Oh, there is 30 million to be won. Then you tell yourself, you know, I have a good luck. I was always winning cake when I was in school. Then you go and buy a lottery ticket. You are right into gambling. And then you start going to a casino. You start playing the jackpot over there. And try, before you know, you will sell your price to go play jackpot. You will sell everything you have. If you have a bicycle, you will sell it. Put on Kijiji. <laughs> you will sell it to go play jackpot. Because you'll be caught in that spirit. You will sell all you have. Because you'll be caught in that spirit. You see, it starts off in a, in a very simple way. That it, it looks innocent. It looks, it looks odd. Uh, unhelpful. He looks okay. He looks nothing wrong about it. I do donate to charity. There is charity and I have the money, I will give it. But I will not do it on that lottery. I won't do it on that lottery. If I have $100, $200, I will give to charity. 
But I will not do it under lottery. If you want to sell me a lottery ticket for Chio, I will not buy it. If I have a hundred dollar or two hundred, I will give it to Chio. But I will not do it under lottery. But there's a spirit behind that thing. I don't want it around me. I don't want it in my house. I don't want it near me. No more. I don't want it. Praise be to God. And the books that we have in our society that we read. The books. Harry Potter, what is that? You want to read all that? So when you read, you get that knowledge in your head. You store it. The day that you come to a critical point, problem in your life, what are you going to do? Your mighty devil will tell you, remember that book you read? You remember that magic book you read? You, you remember how they were playing those magic things and they were doing those things? You are drawn back now. Your mind, they will take your mind back. And before you know, you start to practice those things. Let's read something here. Second Kings chapter 17. Second Kings chapter 17. So yeah, <coughs> in Deuteronomy, God has warned Israel what they should not do. They should not do those things. Second Kings Chapter 17. They have been warned not to do those things. <clears throat> Chapter 17 of 2 Kings. Let's read 16. Let's start from 16. But we haven't had time, have you time to go read everything through. You can read the whole chapter when you're at home. But let's start from verse 16. It says here. And they left the commandments of the Lord. This is Israel now. This is Israel. That is, the kingdom has been broken into two parts. Israel, the ten tribes, and then Judah and Benjamin, the other tribe. Okay? So, this is Israel now, capital in Samaria. He said, verse 16, And they left all the commandments of the Lord, their God, and made them and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a group, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them, and served Baal. You see that? They worship the host of heaven, those fallen angels, those princes of those nations. They worship them. Fallen angels. We've been through that. They began to worship the host of heaven. We are not saying this is not the angels that are standing before God now. These are fallen angels that the devil pulled down with him. They made them princes in different countries, in different places. Children of Israel began to worship the host of heaven. They forgot all the commandments of their God and made great images. What brought them to? After all the miracles, after the rain, after the Bajaja, after all the destruction of Jericho, after all that they saw? Yes, yes, yes. It starts gradually. That they go to a point. The Bible said they, for, they left all the commandments of their God. They left everything, everything, and they made themselves images. 17. Therefore, okay, <laughs> uh -uh. okay, and they, and they cause their sons. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. Uh, brother, you know what that means? They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to idols by burning them. They burnt their children as sacrifice to idols. Talk about spare. Right? 
You think they don't love their children? When they gave birth to them, oh my child, they rejoice. They rejoice. But when they were manipulated, they were so highly manipulated, they thought that if they sacrifice that child, they will get 10 times blessing. They bought their children as sacrifice to idols. It is not the eye of pleasure that they used to do it. Situations in their life caused that to happen. Situations, problems that came on them. And they thought by and they were told by the heathens around where they got that thing. Oh, if you do this, you will be blessed. All you do this, you will be blessed. Of course, they saw those hidden prosperity. That is why they went there. If those hidden were wretched, would they go there? No. But those hidden were prospering, so they went to other. Are you doing it? So this is this is the idol we serve. You know, every year we serve it. We offer one of our child to the idol, and this and this and that. And they saw them prospering. You ask, why did God let them prosper? And his children are prospering. Why did God let them prosper? They, were to, they are going to be destroyed. You give riches to the wicked. To be destroyed. Praise God. But the children of Israel, because they left the commandment of God, that is why they were not prospering. They left it. They love the commandment of God. Little by little, little by little, don't give room to the devil. So they sacrifice their children. They offer their children as sacrifices. <coughs> Chapter. Yeah, 17. All right. And use the divination and enchantment. And sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Say so they provoke God to anger. Don't provoke him now. Because you are his child. And everything you do that's against God's word, we provoke him. You don't provoke him. Say so verse 18. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. God just carried them away into exile. Send them out. Say, get out of my land. Send them out to exile. Carry them away. Let them go there and serve those idols well. Let them go there and suffer well. So when you think that, oh, I'm suffering right now, no, trust the Lord. Still hold to him. Because what is ahead when you reject the Lord, you will hate it. Are we not be afraid of coronavirus? <laughs> but when the protest came, I think coronavirus is sleepy now. <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody is worried about, it, about that again. Coronavirus is sleepy somewhere. Right? So that is how it is. When you think, oh, I am suffering, like I was, I, I keep saying it. Many, many years ago, I was listening to the radio and somebody was complaining bitterly. I am suffering. I am suffering. He was complaining to the, to the, to the host in the radio. You see, I am suffering so hard in this place. Could you imagine in this country, I am washing my clothes with my hands. <laughs> I said, oh God, have mercy. <laughs> this is the suffering of this man. Because he washes his clothes with his hand, that is his suffering. That is the greatest suffering he's passing through now because he's washing his clothes with his hands. Right? <laughs> uh, let's fear the Lord. David, in Psalm 106, has this to say. 
Psalm 106, Psalm 106, verse 35. Psalm 106. <clears throat> Verse 35, referring to that same place that we've read, David said, But were me God among the hidden and laid their works. That is how I started, they mingle the people of Israel, mingle themselves among the hidden, and they laid their ways. And God said, Don't lay their ways. They said, Nah, forget about that. We know better. We are not fools. If, if the snake is coming, we will run away. They thought, but were me God among the hidden, and laid their works, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, who they sacrifice unto the God, unto the idols of the Canaan, of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus, where they defied with their own works and went to worry with their own invention. Therefore, was a, was a wrath of the Lord kindled against his people. He so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the hidden. You see, God gave them up because they, re they refused to take his word. And I'm pleading with you this morning, take the word of God. Don't let nothing pressure you to, to buy into what the word is offering you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't say, I am stressed now. So I'm going to go buy some nicotine drugs and take. Don't do that. Don't do that now. Don't get into that. Don't get into drugs. Don't abuse substances. Because it will, from there, progress into occultism. And occultism will bring you under witchcraft. Right there. You cannot be dealing in drugs and will not be under witchcraft. It's a law. It's a law of the devil. It will ruin your life. Yes, it will ruin your life. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do the best you can do. If you are studying for exam and you, you, you are falling asleep, go take coffee. If that is not working, just read what you can read and leave the rest to God. But don't get into drugs. Don't say, oh, this, medic, this drug here, yeah, if I take it, it makes me study hard. It makes me do this. It make me... Don't do that. Because it's not going to end, it's just your study. And when you finish, that drug will bring the upon you. Whatever makes you high, when that happiness is gone, it's going to bring depression upon you. It will become miserable for you. You see? A very high level of anxiety will come upon you that you just can't break loose from. It can destroy your life. That's what brings about suicide. My friend, run away from those things. Don't give yourself to them now. Because it will not reward you well. It will not pay you well. And if you destroy yourself here, you will go to hell and face judgment for that. So don't give yourself to those things. Whatever way they come, that is why the Bible warns us. Evil communication corrupts good manner. That is not just talking now, but evil association. They corrupt good manner. Bad association. But you say, but they are nice people, they are nice friends, they are nice. Yes, they are nice today. But the, the things they are doing, which maybe you may feel is nice, after a while it makes you so absorbed into the system. But the next time you're going to do what they are doing, if they are smoking, you will smoke. If you are smoking, he's going to take it to a higher, a different level. To a different level. That is where your life will be destroyed. Your life will be destroyed. You say, but, ah, but if they are doing it, they are not destroyed. Why should my own be different? You are different already. You are different to begin with. Israel was different to begin with. 
right? Israel was different. And when they went to do those things, the judgment they got was higher than what the others got. Because God, God didn't care about those either. No. He is done with them. They are gonna be and they're gonna be thrown into hell anyway. So he's done with them. But for his people that he has fought for, his people that he has delivered, his people that he, he stood against the God of Egypt and brought them out, his people that he has redeemed for them to turn around and go back to the very thing he, he destroyed for them to possess the land. It was a reproach to God, you know. It was a reproach to him. And God wasn't happy with them. I encourage you this morning, wherever you are, let no pressure push you into turning away from God. Let no pressure, let nothing push you into turning. Because that thing you think, oh, it's so hard on you, oh, it's so difficult for you, you will find out that you were even in heaven at that time. You will discover later in life that whatever difficulty you think you are going through right now, later in life, if you don't hear the word of God, you will discover that at that time when you were saying, I am so this, I am so that, you were in heaven. You were enjoying. And you didn't know it. You were enjoying. So give your heart to the Lord Jesus. If you find yourself in these difficulties, you need to be prayed for. You come, we pray for you. You ask, the, call for the elders, they will pray for you. They will give, do deliverance for you. And that spirit will get out from your life. God has a better thing for you. God has a joy for you. Look, there is joy in serving the Lord Jesus. Press on. There is joy in serving the Lord Jesus. But you've got to leave everything behind and follow him. You don't do a test drive. You leave everything behind and follow him. Say, Lord, I have given my life fully to you. Whether it takes 20 years to get me to where I need to be, I just want to stay here with you. I'm going nowhere. I want to stay here with you. And I guarantee you, he will raise you up. He will raise you up. So don't look to those things. Those fantasy world, it's not real. Okay? Those fantasy world, it's not real. That is why those people take those drugs, oh, they are in fantasy, they are, they are all happy, they are all this, that, that, over there. Then when, it, when the influence were, uh, were out, they come out so miserable, so angry, so depressed, so uh, uh, traumatized, uh, uh, just can't, can't sit quiet. So don't get into that. And let the Lord help you through. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. <coughs> Let's see if I can have time to finish up what I have left. Galatians chapter 3. <coughs> Galatians 3 1. Brother Paul was writing to the church here in Galatians. And. Uh, <coughs> Oh, foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Oh, foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you? Who had bewitched you? Who had begun? Who had deceived you? Who had manipulated you? Understand that? So we are looking at Satan's activities in the church. Witchcraft in the church. Manipulations in the church. Oh, he started way back in the church in Eden. When the devil came in through the serpent, the Bible said the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the feet. More subtle. Knows how to manipulate, knows how to speak his words, he knows how to pick his words and to manipulate. And so the woman was manipulated to think that, oh, if I just eat this fruit, 
I will be so great. I will be wise. If I, there will be no evil, come near me. What did she get? The very opposite. The very opposite. Did the devil tell her, when you eat it, there will be some evil coming with you? No. She got the very opposite. The very opposite. How many people today can name all the animals that God created? <laughs> but Adam, before the fall, named all the animals, he gave name to all of them. And whatever name he gave was the name of it. God honored it. He had the knowledge of what God wanted to do. But now, since the fall, do we know? You have to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray before one little shadow. <laughs> right? Before one little shadow. Elijah had to pray and pray and pray and pray before a little high, a little cloud like a hand. You could see, okay, that is rain coming. But if you and I pray that prayer today and we saw that little cloud, we will, we will not interpret it to be rain coming because we have no knowledge. But that was what was promised to eat there. If you eat it, you'll be as wise as God. Knowing good and evil, you will be as wise as God. You will know as God. Do we know now? Do we understand now? No. It was, a, it was an op opposite of what she was promised. Deception. So you see deception right there in the very first church. Very first people serving God. Very first group of God's people. We see deception right there. And now, Brother Paul, right into the Galatian church, he said, Who had bewitched you? Who had bewitched you? That you should not follow the truth. Who had manipulated you from following the truth? From following Jesus. Verse 2. Said so this only will I learn of you. Receive the spirit of. Receive ye the spirit. By the work of the law. Or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish? Have ye. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Evidently, some, some preachers have come in and they have told the people, unless you are circumcised, according to the circumcision of Moses, you will not be saved. They've been manipulated. They've been manipulated. They've been manipulated from trusting in Christ the works of the law. And that is witchcraft. When Satan comes, he tries to take you from the headship. Jesus is our head. Jesus is the head of the church. And anything that takes your focus from Christ takes you from a legitimate authority to an illegitimate authority. Alright? And when you move over to illegitimate authority, you come under witchcraft. So, Brother Paul is right by saying, Who had bewitched you? <laughs> Who had manipulated you from rejecting from, from, from the leadership of Jesus? Who took you from the leadership of Jesus to the leadership of some demons of mammoth doctrines? Who had manipulated you? That is demonology. In, in Christianity. That is witchcraft in Christianity. Right there in the church, Brother Paul identified. I want to look at that before we, we leave today. <clears throat> he said, Are you so foolish? Have you begun in the spirit? And are you now made perfect by the, by the flesh? And I want to say that to our young people today too. Can you think? Can you look back? Your parents that gave birth to you, that raised you up, 
have raised you up to be a good child. When you were sick, who came by you? When you were hungry, a little child, who came by you? When you pee on your diaper, who came by you? They care. They, they, they went after your welfare. They want you to be, to be right. They want, they, I'm not saying they are perfect. They had their mistakes. They had their own doings. But I can tell you that as far as morals is concerned, they may not know all the degrees that you know. They may not know your calculus that you know. They may not know your chemistry that you know. But about morality, about what, how to behave properly and live a good life, I think they know better than you do. They know better than you do on that. They know how to live so that you will prosper. They use their failures. They try to use their experience to shape your future, to make you better. Where they make mistakes. Oh, I should have listened to this. I should have listened to that. They use that to advance you so you don't make the same mistake. Don't turn it, don't turn it down. Don't turn it down. So that is what the devil tries to do. The devil, the devil tries to substitute rules and activities for the cross. He tries to turn you away from following the Lord Jesus. He tries to give you something other than Christ. He tries to give you something other than Christ. For Christ is to be the absolute. He should be the one you look up to and nothing more than that. The word of God is the absolute. Look to that word and stand by it there. It's a dangerous thing. I've heard of it sometime when some prophets today, or those that say they have the gift of prophecy, some prophets today, they said, oh, not everything is written in the Bible. You know? So you make a statement like that, then tomorrow, you're going to come back and say, God told me this. Where is it? No, not everything is written in the Bible. And that becomes the umbrella under which you are going to do what you want to do because not everything is written in the Bible. Be careful now. Be careful about that. I will not take that. I'd rather take what I have here in the Bible. This is sufficient for me. Have I kept this here? So why am I looking for more? <laughs> I have enough here to keep me going. I'm not done yet. When I'm done with this, I will take the extra one. But I'm not done yet. <laughs> I will have enough time to keep everything that is here. Why do I want more? God is not going to judge me by the extra that he didn't write here. <laughs> it is what he wrote here. That is what he will judge me by. Not by the extra that he didn't write here. It is sufficient for you to remain here. It is sufficient for you to, to stick to what is written down here. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. <coughs> Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. <coughs> We're going to examine some examples how the enemy crept in and manipulated the people from God's word to everybody. Revelation chapter 2. I'd like to read from verse 12. So we are in the third church age you now. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? These things said he which had the sharp sword with two edges, the word. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name. These are the believers in that church age. They held fast the name of the Lord. 
and has not denied my faith. Even in those days, wearing Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. <laughs> when he says where Satan dwelleth, you know what he means. But I have a few things against you, against thee, because thou hast dear them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat thee sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication? That is it. God brought back what Balak did. He pointed it because he was seeing that spirit moving in this church age also. You know, last week we looked at Balak, Balaam. How that he was called to come and curse the children of Israel. Balak recruited Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel. And I told you then that the battle all the kings in those days were fighting war was more in the spiritual realm than in the physical realm. They got to win that battle in the spirit realm before they even attend the physical one. Before they send their soldiers, they must have fought that battle in the spirit realm. True curses. They unleash curses, spare, and demons take those spare to act upon them. And so the war become battles of battles taking place in the spiritual realm. And so when Balaam, Balak called for Balak called for Balaam to come, God knew what Balaam was asked to do. If now listen, if what Balaam was going to do would have not had any effect on Israel, why did God show up? Why did he show up? But God knew the importance. <laughs> he knew that this guy is going to go. And uh, sham, he got to release sham, release peace against his children. He quickly came to Balaam, said, Stop it. Don't do it. They are my children. They are blessed. Don't curse them. They are blessed. Don't curse them. And pressure was put on Balaam. The second time, the king sent more blessings and promotions and packages. And said to him, and when Balaam saw that, he said, okay, let me ask God one more time. Then God showed up again. If the man came, come, go with them. Well, we saw the story how God was angry with him and almost killed him. And then he got to the place. He tried to seduce God to accept that he should cause them. By making seven altars, seven altars, and offering a bullock and a ram on each altar, seven altars at once. Say, God, I know you like blood. I'm just going to give you so much of it. You will have so much burnt offering that you will allow me to curse them. <laughs> There's never a time Israel offers a sacrifice to God on more than one altar. It's only one altar at a time. One altar. But this man came seven altars. And of course, you know number seven is completion. <laughs> he completed the whole thing. Completion. Seven altars. Seven ram, seven bullock on the seven altar. Right? Try to buy God into agreeing to cause them. God came and said, every time he opened his mouth, instead of cursing, he blessed them. Instead of cursing, he blessed them. Instead of cursing, he blessed them. When he couldn't do it, what did he do? He said, I'm going home. He packed his things and, go, and, and left. But let's look down now. Let's look down. Numbers 25. Numbers chapter 25. Numbers 25, quickly, let's open to that. 
Numbers chapter 25. <clears throat> Numbers 25. Now, if you read that, uh, if you read chapter 24, verse 25, it says, And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place. And Balak also went his way. Okay? Now, you read it, all of, uh, all of chapter 24, you will never see one place where Bal Balaam was asking Balak what to do, how to cause the children of Israel, or what to do to make them to fall. It's not there. You don't see by this translation, you don't see. But we see Jesus calling it up in Revelation. That this is what Balaam did that resulted in chapter 25, verse 1. You read 25, verse 1? Actually, he said, uh, And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit wardom with the daughters of Moab. Okay? And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their God. Actually, verse 2 should be written first before verse 1. Because the people were called first to the sacrifice of their gods before they began to commit wardom. They didn't commit wardom from the air. No, they were first called. They were invited. They were told us, we are brothers. I mean, we are, we are close relatives. I mean, Lot and your father, Abraham, uh, 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 Lot was uh, a nephew to Abraham. The same blood. I mean, come, let's. The same blood, but you wanted to kill them. The same blood, you wanted to cause them and finish them up. If you think they were the same blood, but look at the serpent tongue. The serpent tongue of deception. The story is so bad, very bad. You are attempted to cause them and wipe them up three good times. Few hours ago, you wanted to wipe them out. You invited the prophet to come and curse them. But for God that delivered them, they would have been consumed. And now you are saying, we are, we are relatives. We are brothers. I mean, we should all be together. Come, come, come. Come and eat. Come and eat. And there is food here. They invited them to the worship of their idols. Because Balaam told Balak, you know what? You are never going to be able to cause them by me speaking. But if you can make them to come and worship idol, their own God will destroy them. That was his doctrine. That's what Jesus said. He said, you had the doctrine of Balaam. You are the teaching of Balaam. What was the teaching of Balaam? To replace the commandment of to seduce God's people. To do what is evil in the sight of God. The doctrine of Balaam will bring death. We bring death. And the people went. And they were deceived. Oh, we are one. And they went to the sacrifice of their idols. And they ate their food. And they began to commit wardom. They saw their guests, their women, half naked. And they took them whatever they were, so sloppy. And God destroyed them. In one day, 24,000 died. God destroyed them. You say, but why did God destroy them? Did God not know that they were deceived? But he already gave them the word. He already gave them the word. If you run, if you drive and you run a red light, and you said, oh, uh, yeah, it was a red light, but uh, I was just too speedy. <laughs> the police will say, go, right? No, because you were trained. You went to school to be a driver, or you learned. Before you got your license, you passed through the written test that told you 
When you get to a red light, you stop. You passed, so you were trained. Now, if you run a red light, you have no excuse. You must pay the fine. She have no better. God has given them the law before this time. They should not worship any other God but Jehovah God. And they left, they broke the rule. They went and worship other God. They knew better. That's why God did kill them. Because they knew better. They knew what to do. They be told what to do. You see, in the program of God, the man has his role, God has his role. It's always like that. The man has his role, God has his role. God will play his role. But he expects you to play your role. Like what our brother was sharing with us the other day about Jesus coming to the tomb of Lazarus and asking the people to roll away the stone. Yes, that is man's duty. It was a man that put the stone there. Did God put the stone there? No. That was man's action, man's work. So man need to go and take it out. When Lazarus was cut out, no man can give him life. Life can only come from God. And he did his part. He gave him life. And he could come out of, the, out of that place with, the, with his body tied, you know, with the rope. But man put that rope. Man tied him up. And so he told man, lose him. And let him go. That was your work. You take care of it. It's your work. Take care of your work. You see? When God has given you an instruction to do something, you keep to that. You don't expect him to come and do your work for you. No. He won't do it for you. Your work is your work. You have to do your work. If you don't do your work, that is your problem. He gives you a piece of land, till the land, and I will bless it. I will put blessing on the crops, and you will get fruits. But if you say no, uh, you are the dry uh, grain. Lord, you are the multiply them for me. No, that's not the rule of God of multiplication. You have to go to the land and put the grain in the soil and let them grow. And you cut your grass around them till they are mature. But the life, God has to give them life. God has to make them to grow. That is his responsibility. But it is your responsibility to go and till the ground and put the grain. You do your part, God will do his part. You have to do your part. You have to do your part. God told them in Egypt, you put the blood on the door. Then the death angel will pass it by. If they say, no, ah, yeah, we have not said that, but that, that bloody thing, I'm not going to put it on my door. I, this door, I just did it. I don't want any fly to come around it. Good. You will die. You will cry. Your first son will die. And you will cry. God has given his word. It is for them to go get the lamb and examine it, the number of days, and kill it and apply it. If they fail to do that, then they will get a consequence. See? God does his part, and when they did their part, he passed over them. He passed over them. He did not do them any harm. He protected them. He kept them as long as they do their part. That is what we are called to do. It's made, the word is meant to defend you. It is not meant to harm you. It is not meant to destroy you, my friend, my brother, my sister. The word is meant to defend you. It's meant to put, look, it is a gate against the enemy. The word is, is supposed to be a gate, a shield to protect you against the enemy. Don't break the hedge. Don't cross over the world and say, yeah, I know the world said that, but uh, well, we live in a different society now. I'm going to do something else. Don't do that. Don't do that. God is still God. Amen. The sun has not changed from rising in the east and settling in the west. The day that the sun begins to rise from the west and settle in the east, you can change. All right? 
You can do whatever you like. But as long as the sun is still rising from the east and, and settling in the west, God has not changed. His word has not changed. See, so still God, he's still in control. He's still in control of everything. So they talked to Abelam. Abelam told the people, and you know very well, the Pagamas church age tied up with the third, um, the third parable of Jesus Christ. We are not going to go to, go to that. The third parable of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 13. We've gone through that before. Where Jesus spoke about this little grain of seed, this little mustard seed that is planted in the field. And it grew and became so mighty tree that the best of the air came and perched on it. All right? And the best of the air were brought in by the doctrine of Balaam. It was the doctrine of Balaam that brought those evil birds. These were people who were not Christians. They just came in for political gain. They joined the church for political gain. And they came in with their idols, with all their sorcery, with all their everything. Oh my, praise be to God. They came in with all their sorcery, all their witchcraft, and everything into the church of God. The doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam seduced the people to eat things sacrificed to idols. Before you realize what was going on. The church of God was filled with idol worshippers. The church of God was filled with all kind of sorcery. Sorcery, my friend. We will read that. There was sorcery in the house of God. Witchcraft in the house of God. That was what Bela produced. Because he was a witch doctor. He was a witch doctor. And he has nothing he could, he has to teach what he has. See? And witchcraft is what he has. And that's what he taught. Manipulation. Manipulation. Manipulated the children of Israel to eat his sacrifice. He knew he's going to kill them. Yeah. He knew that we killed them. So he gave them that death pill. So he's like, come, come and worship. We tell them we are one. No, we are the same. We are this, we are that. Come. And when they swallow that death pill, they die. That's right. They die. But God already told them, don't swallow it. Don't swallow that death pill. He gave them that, that, that commandment way before they got to Moab. Way before they got to Moab, he gave them the instruction because he knew what was coming ahead. He said, don't swallow that death pee. Don't worship your idols. Don't let them to serve any idol. Because it will kill you. It will kill you. See? If I see if there's acid there, and I tell you, don't drink that. Don't drink from that bottle. Don't drink it. It will kill you. And when I am gone, you look, uh, don't that foolish man. What are you talking about? That water is clearer than the one from the tap. <laughs> it's clearer. You went and grab it and drink it. All your intestines just begin to, begin to dissolve like that. Right? Is the man a foolish man now? No, he was wise. He was protecting you from destruction. But he didn't listen. Balaam, the witch doctor, he knew the death pee. And he presented it to Babalat. Give them this dead pea. When they eat it, they will die. Don't worry. That will, that will do your job for you. <laughs> yeah? And that's it in the church too. Pagamon's church age. Jesus gave the parable. This little seed, brother, it grew mightily. And the best of the earth came back on him. And they were jumping there, fellowshipping. Are they Christians? No, they are not worshippers. <laughs> they are not worshippers. They are all jumping here for political gain. Yeah, because if they don't come to the church, the church holds the power. Who will be the next Caesar? Who will not be? Who will hold position? Who will not hold position? The church is the one that votes. It's the one that votes. It does this then. So now they come cutting the church. That's why they join the church. But they have not left their idols. They have not left their sorcery. They have not left their witchcraft. They have not left their magic. They were still carrying everything with them. That is a doctrine of Balaam. 
and same part, same third church age, the Pagamon church age, Jesus said, I have in your midst them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught my servant to eat in sacrifice to idols, to worship Baal, commit fornication. You are exposed to Christ. You are to be the bride of Christ. You are exposed to Christ. If you take any other word apart from the word of Christ, that is fornication. Okay? When he says they commit fornication, then it's not that they lie down or do something. No, 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 no. But they left the word that God gave to them to take another man's word. Contrary to God, that is fornication. Hallelujah. We haven't got time to go too deep into this now. But you see the, the thing there. The, the, the witchcraft in the church today. Seduction in the church today. Let's move on quickly now for time. Verse 18. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. Revelation 2 to 18. The Titara church age. <clears throat> and unto the angel of the church in Titara, write, This thing said the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass judgment. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. No way study, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest, thou allowed, thou allowed, thou allowed that woman, Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat in sacrifice to idols. Again, witchcraft, manipulation, manipulation. Jezebel, these are two spirits in the Old Testament which God never, he, looked, he, took, he saw them coming back again. In the end, the spirit of Jezebel and the spirit of Balaam. The spirit of, the spirit of Balaam and the spirit of Jezebel, they are the same spirit. Witchcraft. They are witchcraft spirit. Praise be to God. Just like Balaam taught Balak it was a teaching. It was an instruction to do what was contrary, trying to hide the true word of God, take away the true word of God from the people. Oh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Just come and eat. Just come and worship. This is our God. Like you have your God. This is our God. Just come and worship too. And when Israel saw how the Muhammad prospered, how they prospered, how they were living in their homes, and all these wives, they'd be walking in the, in the wilderness for almost 40 years. They saw, oh, yeah, let's go, let's go. And they went and sold themselves, and they were destroyed. Jezebel came in on a political ground. Ahab married Jezebel to try to have a political alliance with the kingdom of Sidon. So in the time of war, then he will, he will preserve his kingdom on that side. Political ground. And when Jezebel came in, we knew what he did. We knew how he brought Baal into Israel. And the people, all the people, went to worship Baal. And those that were supposed to be prophets of God, they became prophets of Baal. <laughs> Understand that? They were supposed to be prophets of God. They became prophets of Ba. They were bowing down to Ba. They were worshiping Ba. He taught them the rules of Ba. And you knew how, how, how wicked that woman was. How brutal she was. How she would, she would intimidate anybody that would, not, that would stand in her way. And when neighbor said he was not going to give his vineyard to Ahab, and the earth was sad and would not eat. And Jezebel came in and saw her husband was not eating. Said, why? Said, neighbor will not give me, give me his vineyard. <laughs> Is that why you are not eating? Can you get up on it? 
<laughs> Who was the kingdom? Does it not belong to you? He just went inside the office, wrote the letter, took the king's stamp. Bah! Oh, yeah. Where is the servant? Wait. By this time tomorrow, let Nabal be stoned to death. Raise up two witnesses, testify against him. He caused God and he caused Moses. Put it to death. And because those people there had been sold to Jezebel, they did be bought over. They quickly agreed. They did her bidding and they stoned Nabal to death. Jezebel, it's a bad spirit. Very bad. See, Jesus had to call it in this church age. Where this church, where this church grew, oh man. And polluted the place. And those that stood for the truth were being killed. They were being roasted over fire. Because Jezebel's spirit has possessed them. Manipulated the church. Anyone that opposed them must be destroyed. Tatara Church Age, 1,000 years of Satan's millennium. It was Satan's millennium. 1,000 years of darkness. 1,000 years of darkness. Witchcraft throws you into darkness. It does not give you light. You think you have light, but it's a fake one. It's a fake light. It's not a true light. Jezebel seduced. The church was seducing. The church says, oh no, you don't need to believe in Jesus. You don't believe, need to believe in Jesus. Oh, you don't need to do penance. Did you kill anybody? Yes, sir. Oh, that's a fine, that's fine, that's fine. $300, you'll be forgiven. Those were the doctrines of Jezebel. Martin Luther wrote 95 theses. They were the doctrines of Jezebel. And those 95 theses, those 95 theses that he wrote there, yeah, they were to blind the people to God. Each one of them blinded the people to how oh, my goodness. Each one of them blinded the people to God. Witchcraft. That's what he's saying here. She called herself a prophetess. She called herself the spoke mouth of God. She says she's the one that speaks for God. But what is she bringing out? Debt. She's spilling out debt. She's the woman that took, that took the dough, that took the meal, and divided it into three portions, and hid it. She hid it until the whole thing was levy, spot. And she brought out the spot me and gave it to the people. That is the, the fourth parable of Jesus, lining up with Tatara Church Age. He took the me, the dough, and hid it. Put yeast into it and hid it. By the time she brought it out, it was leavened. And leavened is point. It ought to be unleavened. But when she brought it out, it is leavened. It is point. It's no more leavened. Something has been mixed with it. It rose now. It's no more leavened. I mean, sorry, it's no more unleavened. It is leavened. It's point. And that's point food is given. Before he started giving. And when God opened the eyes of Martin Luther, in the fifth church age, brought out 95 pieces, 95 evils, 95 ways of Satan blinding the people, 95 ways of Satan manipulating the people, turning their eyes from Christ, taking them from the headship of Jesus. Be out of the worship of witchcraft. You say witchcraft? Yes. The, that prophetess, she was a witch. Turn with me to chapter 18. I'll show you now. She was a witch. Chapter 18, Revelation chapter 18. 
She was seducing God's people. She was manipulating them. Turn them away from Christ to eat things that will destroy them. But for the message of God, this word we are hearing, we won't hear it again. Are you there? Now, let's read. <clears throat> and after these things, I saw another angel came down, come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of devils, and the host of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bed. What is that? That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. The cage of every hateful bed. He's not just talking of some bears flying outside. No, these are demons. These are demons. And as the people, people carry those spirits. And as the people enter the place, they bring those spirits. And it is those spirits he's addressing now. He's not addressing the individual. He's addressing those spirits. The people came in, he started from the, from the third church age. When the Balaam doctrine brought them in with their idols, with their sorcery, with their everything, Jupiter, you worship coming. You worship Mercury coming. You worship Venus coming. Right. And they came with those spirits into the church. And they sat down there. And the church moved on. By the time we got to the fourth church age, ah, she got a prophet now. That tell them it's all right. It is perfect. There's nothing wrong about that. Seduce them. When Jehoshaphat went to visit Ahab, and Ahab said, Oh, we have to go to Wai Ramadilla. Will you go with me? So they said, uh, Jehoshaphat said, Yeah, I'll go with you. You are my friend. I'll go with you. Wherever you want to. My soldiers are your soldiers. No problem. We can go. But can we find out from God first? Whether it is God's will. And they brought 400 prophets. Oh, yeah, no problem. I've got them. I've got them. 400 of them. They'll tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> and they came. Oh, well dressed prophets, well trained prophets, well behaved prophets. And they began to speak. Every one of them, pam, 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 pam. Exactly the same thing, never deviated, pow, pow, 400 times. Can any be, anything be more correct than that? How could it be more correct than that? 400 times, no penny, that you are going to prosper. 400 times. Can it be more correct than that? Prophesy to him. And the man of the spirit, the man that had designed it, Say, so, yeah, they spoke real well. But do you have another one beside this that does not belong to this group? I have got angry. Why are you asking for more? You've got 400. What we want to do? If one come and say anything contrary, will you not say it's an athlete? Will you not reject it? You want one more. He said, yeah, no, no problem. But can, do you have one that does not belong to this to this school, we just need to hear one who does not belong to this school. Oh, well, what do you? Okay, there is one, but I don't like him. Let not the king say so. Just call him. Let him come. Let's see if he will agree with this one. And they call Micah. In First Kings chapter twenty-two, verse thirteen. You may not bother to open to it, but you can write it down and read it. So they send a messenger to call Micah. First Kings chapter 22, verse 13. <clears throat> they send this messenger to call Ma Micaiah. And the messenger that was called to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let the word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them 
and speak that which is good. Manipulation. Manipulation. Oh, we will accept you to our club now. You will be one of the protests of the The kid will give you a car. Oh, they don't have a car in those days. He will give you a horse and a chariot to carry you wherever you want to go. If you agree and you speak like one of those prophets, you know you have been banished for so many years now. You never come near the king's palace. This is an opportunity for you to be part of the king's palace. If you speak what the king would like to hear. Verse 14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. I'm not going to compromise. I will say what is, because I have not been bewitched. Like you are bewitched. I have not been bewitched. I am not under the it only legitimate authority. I am not under witchcraft leadership. I am under the leadership of God. What he put in my mouth to speak, that I will speak. See the spirit of Jezebel? Manipulate. You don't do what he says, kick you out. You don't do what he wants, he put you in prison. And when, when Micaiah came and told the king, go and prosper, like other people said. Ah, the king said, no, 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 this is a lie. This is a lie, this is a lie. Don't believe him. <laughs> Joseph, I don't believe him, don't believe him. This is a lie. He has never done anything good. And they have said, I told you to tell me the true name. Name of the Lord. Aha. My guy said, you want the name of the Lord? I saw him open. He said, let this go home, they are sheep without shepherd. Hey, he just said, I told you. Your shepherd, I told you. See, he's finished. He's finished. I'm done. <laughs> I am done. If the sheep are without shepherd, I am the shepherd. He means I'm dead. <laughs> he just interpreted it. He means I'm dead. How can the sheep be without shepherd? He means I'm dead. See, now he, told, he said, I'm going to die. I told you. He said, I saw Abu. There was a meeting head. And they said, Who oh, we go on and make Ahab to fall in Ramon Gilead? And this spirit said this. And the other one said this. And one spirit said, I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. Say, Ahab, all oh, these your prophets are liars. <laughs> they have been possessed with a lying spirit. And the chief of the prophets came and slapped him on the face. Who told you? Where did this spirit go to when he left me? Did he come to you? Did he come to you? When he left me, did he come to you? Who are you that this spirit should go to you when he left me? <laughs> oh my. Witchcraft is very bad. And Jesus said, I hate it. I hate it. Thou woman Jezebel. Thou woman. Ahab took Micaiah and put him in prison. He said, put him in prison till I come in peace. And Micaiah said, if you ever return in peace, God has not spoken by me. Did he return in peace? No. Praise God. The word of God is so true. So true. So when you read it, stay by it. And when you read that place we read today, Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel came down from heaven. An angel came down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Have you ever meditated upon it? An angel came down from heaven, and the earth was lightened. The earth was lightened with his glory. Not that, not that lighting to give understanding to. The earth was lighting with his glory. When he came, the revelation that he brought in, lighting the earth, gave understanding to the earth. 
Not that everybody will receive that understanding now. It's just like you say that Jesus died for the sins of the world. You may just conclude, therefore the whole world is saved. No. It doesn't mean the whole world is saved. But those that are in the world that he came to die for, they are saved. Those are the ones that are, that are saved in it. When that angel came and his glory lighting the world, not the glory of wet, not the glory of money, but the understanding, the revelation that the angel brought, lighting those that are made to receive it. And as he began to speak, that angel began to reveal who Babylon is. He began to reveal who Babylon is, what Babylon is made of, what Babylon consists. Hallelujah. It's not just a spirit being. Message angel could be human, could be spirit. But we are told here, this one, when he came, he had great power. He had great power and he had such a light, such a revelation that lighting the earth from coast to coast. Such a revelation that lighting the earth brought light, brought revelation, brought understanding, brought us back to God. Amen. And revealed, because he cried out mightily with a strong voice, saying, This same angel, with this great, whose glory light in the earth, the same angel began to reveal what Babylon is. Who is Babylon? What is he made of? Who is there in Babylon? What is this Babylon refer to? Refer to? What does it mean? He began to against it. Say, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every spirit, every foul spirit. He be, these are the things he began to speak. He began to reveal the cancan worm that is in there. And the cage of every unclean and hateful bears. For all nations have drunk of the wine of, of the road of our fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are worse rich through the abundance of her delicacies. She began to reveal what is it that the church system has done. He began to reveal. He began to reveal. At the end, verse 23, the Bible says, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at her, at all indeed. And the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride be heard no more at all in her indeed. For the merchants were the great men of the earth. For by their, for by their sorceries, by their sorceries were all nations deceived. The Bible says she was practicing sorceries. So what I've been saying since, I'm not just picking it from the air. The Bible says she has been practicing sorceries. And she used her sorceries to deceive the earth, to acquire her wealth, her money, whatever she, whatever she has. It is true sorceries. Manipulation. The whole earth got manipulated. It's a very bad thing before God. What we've gone through, it's a small topic, but it's, it's a, it's God, God look at it from a different angle. He doesn't want you to get near it. He doesn't want you to get near it. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Stay clear from it. And give your heart fully to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't, end, don't, don't pack those things that are wrong in the sight of God. Run away from it. As God has said, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, we read this morning from verse 9, God hates all those things. The chanter, the soothsayers, and all those diviners. God hates them. God hates them. But these days, there are going to be more. There are going to be more in the church realm. There are going to be more in the churches. There are going to be more in places, different places. 
There's going to be more. Watch for the word of God. Stay by the word of God. Live by the word of God. Jezebel is teaching her doctrine. She's teaching. The doctrine of Balaam is also there. The doctrine of it doesn't matter. Where we are, the doctrine of inclusiveness. We include sin in the church. We include sin. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's just a small, small thing. God understands. Yes, God understands his word. He doesn't want us to fiddle with the things of the devil. They may, they may appear clean. They may appear nice. They may appear perfect. But so long as it's not the word of God, don't be married to it. Don't give yourself to it. So he cried out here in chapter 18, verse 4. Chapter 18, verse 4. This same angel, whose glory, when he came down, having great power, and, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Of course, we know that ministry has come and gone. Verse 4. He said, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Come out from her. God don't want you to join with, with, with witchcraft. Doesn't want you to join with anything that is contrary to the word of God. No matter how little it might be, no matter how you feel, oh, I can touch this one. Well, if you are going so deep, I'll just pull myself out. No. God wants you to stick to his word. Say, come out from her and be no partakers of her sins. Be no partakers of her plague. Because all that is there is just sorceries. And God hates that. The word of God is true. Stick to it. Repent. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. For the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The word of God is given to shield you. Is given to protect you. Is given to, 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 to protect you from the invasion of Satan. He wants to steal from you. Satan has nothing to give you, my friend. Jesus said, the thief come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He kills, he steals. He what did he give you? Anything? No. All the three things took away. Take away. He steals what God has given you. He steals your life, and he kills you. He destroys everything that belongs to you. He doesn't give you anything. But Jesus came so you can have life and have it more abundantly. He came to give you everything. Ignore that. Why will you, why will you ignore that? Why will you say, oh, my hardship is so tough. I can't, I can't keep up with serving God now. Whatever that situation is, for God. In prayer, he will help you. He pray, in prayer, you will overcome. Ask the brethren to pray with you. In prayer, you will overcome. Stand there. Stand there. Bear it. Go through it. You will come out victorious. You will suddenly come out victorious. You think it was easy for children of Israel to cross the Red Sea, to go through the wilderness? They had their dark moment. They had their difficult moment. But those who endure, J uh, Caleb, I mean uh, Caleb and Joshua that endure at the end. They got to the land and they enjoyed what was there. Easy for them to stand against the ten spies. Who said, Oh no, we can't take it. Two voices against ten. It was tough, but they, they took their stand. They took their stand. They said, We saw it, we saw the miracle, we saw those things. God is interested in us. He will give us the land. They were threatening moment. They felt, oh, those people are strong. It's not like they didn't see them. They saw the giant, but they refused to call them giant. They refused to call them giant. 
The, the cities were won for, for truth. They were won. Rah, rah, rah. They are strong men here. But Caleb and Joshua refused to acknowledge that those strength, the strength of the world can do anything. They decided on their own. They were not going to acknowledge the strength of their war, neither the strength of the men of the city. They decided on their own. They were not going to look at those things. But they were going to look at what they have seen God done, what, they has, what God has spoken to his prophet, that he will bring them through to the land. Praise be to God. Therefore, I encourage you that you hold to his word. Let's stand together and as we pray this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Sweet spirit. Sweep over my soul. My rest is complete. While I sing at your feet, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul, sweet spirit. Sweep over my soul. My rest is complete while I sing at your feet. Spirit, sweep over my soul. Ask the Holy Spirit now to come in, sweep over your soul, to give you understanding of the word of God to give you a revelation that brings you to the truth. Let the Holy Spirit sweep over your soul now to bring you to the truth. Jesus said God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit first then in truth because the spirit will guide you to the truth. As the Holy Spirit to come and guide you to that truth. And guide you to that truth. That the powers of Satan's manipulation cannot work on you. The influence of demonic manipulation cannot work on you. When the devil begins to speak into your ears and say, Oh, why are you serving God? What has he done for you? He can't help you. He can't do this. I can't do this for you. I can't do that for you. Hear the voice of God. Let the Holy Spirit come into you now and guide you to the truth and block your ears from hearing the devil that he may open your ears to hear God, give you a hearing heart, a hearing heart. God wants you to hear him with your heart. We cannot use our head to hear him. We can only hear him with our heart. Let us pray. Talk to him. Talk to him this morning. Hallelujah. <coughs> In Jesus' name we pray. I don't know what your needs are, but if you have been listening to the word of God this morning, and you find out that you have Join yourself to some cults and to some witchcraft things, to some things that are societies that are not right. I want you to come to the Lord this morning. Wherever you are in your home, wherever you are in your country, whichever province, whichever place you are, I'd like you to raise your hand to the Lord Jesus and return to him. He can deliver you. He can deliver you. The Lord can deliver you. And when we finish, if you'd like to contact us, please send a message. Send a chat. Call our number. I will be glad to talk to you. 613-806-4349.
613-806-4349. We will talk to you. But I'd like you right now, if you are finding yourself in that situation, to raise your right hand to the Lord Jesus Christ. A sign that I've heard your word, I'm coming home. I'm leaving all those witchcraft things, those sorcery things, those chanting, those charming, spell casting. I'm leaving those things. I'm leaving behind all those things that I have practiced, those magic that I have practiced. Oh yes, they did those in the days of Paul. And when Paul had preached, and the people repented, they brought all their magical books, and they were burnt. The, the price of them was about 50,000 silver, piece of silver. They burned them. Are you, have you been practicing magic? Have you been practicing witchcraft? Have you given yourself to those evil spirits? Chanting, charming, sorcery? Come to the Lord this morning. Raise your right hand to him. And pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I have heard your word, and I'm coming home. I repent of my past. I repent of those things that I used to do. All the witchcraft things, the magic, and all those evil things I gave myself to. I repent of them, and I put them under the blood of Jesus Christ now. I have heard that you died for me, for my sins, and I believe it. And that you raised up from the dead for my justification. I believe it. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I renounce all those wicked works and the works of darkness. I reject them. I accept you, Lord Jesus, into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Give me power from this day that I will live for you. I will serve you in spirit and in truth by your help. Thank you for accepting me to be your son, your daughter, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I don't know who has raised you to her hand and wherever. I don't know who has been in this area, but Lord, I commit them, whoever it may be, I commit them into your hands. I am asking for your grace to take over. For your word says, as many as have received him, to them gave he power to be called the sons of God. Father Lord, as you have given them power to divide, defy gravity, to raise up their right hand to you, to declare unto you that they have heard your word and they are giving their lives to you. Father, forgive them all their transgressions. Forgive them their iniquities, Lord. We pray by the blood of Jesus Christ now. And I ask, oh God, you receive them and give them strength, give them power to live the life of a son of God, a daughter of God. Give them power, O oh Lord, from this day that they live the life of the Son of God, the daughter of God. Satan, in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave these people now. These people you have burned for so many years. You have deceived them through your sorcery. You have deceived them through your manipulation. Today, you have been exposed. And now I command you to come out from them 
and be chained down in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. I expel you from your life. Every spirit of sorcery, witchcraft, divination, charming, soothsaying, I expel you from the lives of these people. That you come back no more. You are forever shut out of their lives and bother them no more. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask the angel of the Lord to watch over them, to be a hedge over them, to keep them and guide them through the way. Oh Lord, my Father, thank you for your mercy. Keep your children. I commit them into your hands. Lord, deliver them from all the manipulation that Satan wants to project against them. But they cannot work anymore. These are yours, Lord. And you have the power to keep them. You have the power to strengthen them. And make them walk in the light of the truth. For your word says that we know the truth. And the truth will set them free. Lord, as they have heard the truth, may they receive that freedom. May they go walk in that freedom as they walk in the truth. Grant it in Jesus' name. I pray for the rest of the brethren, Lord. I commit our week into your hands. Be with us, O God, and guide us. Let your mercy follow us through the week. Lord, lead us as we go to work, we come back. We commit our families into your hands. We ask your grace upon your life. All the plans of darkness against your children, I condemn it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power of darkness that wants to rise up against any of your brethren, any of your children, oh God, I know you will stand up for us. I know you have charged your angels to watch over us, to keep us in our way, that they do us, the enemy do us no harm. Lord, you have set a boundary for the enemy that he cannot cross over to get to us. Oh, you have set a boundary. And I pray, Lord, for your children, that you will help us that we will not cross over to the side of the enemy. We will not cross over to his camp, but we shall remain within your word. Father, teach us your word and help our heart to desire more of it. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you and praise you. We commit your children who may have one need or the other into your hands. You know all our needs. I pray that you will grant them blessings. Oh, Lord, grant them blessings. May you grant blessings to every one of us today, Lord. Whatever our need may be, Lord, grant us blessings. Let your peace be our portion. Any sick, O oh God, I rebuke that sickness from that brother, from that sister. I command that sickness to move out in Jesus' name. Satan, I rebuke you from my sister's life. I rebuke you from my brother's life. You cannot, you cannot be destroying what God has given to them. I rebuke your hand from your life. Those that need help, I declare divine healing upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ came that you might have divine help. And I say receive divine help now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the peace of God be with you. Let the blessings of God be your portion this week. In Jesus Christ's name, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brethren. God be with you. Thank you very much for your patience. Amen. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, when I lay my head to rest, I... God bless you, brother. Amen. Bless you.